السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. To carry on with the general anatomy lectures, I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the anatomy of the cardiovascular system. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt. The objectives of my presentation will be about: first, we will take an overview of the cardiovascular system components. Then we'll have a brief description of the heart. Then we will talk about the blood vessels, the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries, and you will differentiate between these three. Then we will talk about the types of circulations, and the types of anastomosis, and the types of the arteries. As the name of the cardiovascular system implies, the blood is pumped by the heart around a closed circuit of vessels again and again through the various circulations of the body. So the cardiovascular system consists of the following, the blood, which is the fluid that is pumped by the heart into a closed system of vessels called arteries, veins, and capillaries. The blood is a complex mixture of cells, water, and various proteins and sugars. About 55% of its composition is liquid, it's called plasma, and the remaining 45% is solid, made of cells like red blood cells and white blood cells, also platelets. The heart is a four-chambered muscular organ, shaped and sized roughly like a man's closed fist, lies inside the thorax between the two lungs, superior to the diaphragm and slightly to the left of the midline. The heart is wrapped or enclosed in multiple layers. These layers are called the pericardial layers. First, it is enclosed into an outer fibrous layer. It is called the fibrous pericardium. Within it lies the pericardial sac. The pericardial sac is formed of a serous membrane folded around the heart into two layers. The inner layer is called the visceral layer because it is close to the surface of the heart. And the outer layer is called the parietal layer, which lines the fibrous pericardium. The space between these two layers is called the pericardial space. In order to have a better understanding of this, imagine that the heart here looks like our closed fist, and you are pressing into a balloon from one side. The balloon skin will fold upon your hand. So, the inner layer of the skin that is close to your hand represents the visceral layer of the pericardium, while the outer layer of the skin of the balloon represents the parietal pericardium, while the space between the two layers represents the pericardial space. And of course, the balloon represents the pericardial sac. If we cut the heart into a section, it is formed of layers. The outermost one is the epicardium or the visceral pericardium. The middle one is the myocardium and the inner one is the endocardium. For the external features of the heart, it is roughly pyramidal or cone shape. Its apex is plumped, rounded, and corresponds to the tip of the pyramid. It's formed mainly of the left ventricle and directed anteriorly, inferiorly, and to the left. The heart has three surfaces, anterior or sternocostal surface. You can see in this surface the four chamber, the right atrium and the right auricle, the left atrium and the left auricle, the left ventricle and the right ventricle. Also it has an inferior or diaphragmatic surface because it faces the diaphragm and is made mainly by the left ventricle and part of the right ventricle. Then it has a posterior surface or base which lies against the thoracic vertebrae. It's formed mainly by the left atrium and part of the right atrium. If we cut the heart open, we can see the four chambers of the heart. Two atria, they are thin walled, they receive blood which comes from veins, and two ventricles have a thicker wall. In comparison to the atria and they pump blood out of the heart through the arteries. In this view, after removal of the atria and the big arteries coming out of the heart, 
we can see the valves of the heart. There are two types of valves that keep the blood flowing in one direction in the heart. Valves between the atria and the ventricles, we call them the atrioventricular valves or cuspid valves, tricuspid on the right side and tricuspid on the left side, and also valves at the paces of the large vessels leaving the ventricles. They are also called semilunar valves. Within the heart, there is an intrinsic regulating system that initiates and distributes cardiac impulse over the heart. It's formed of a pacemaker, which is called sinoatrial node. The impulse from there spreads into the AV node or atrioventricular node. And from there, the impulse spreads into the AV bundle or atrioventricular bundle. It has another name. It's called the bundle of Hess. Then it splits into right bundle branch and left bundle branch. And from each branch, many fibers come out and the wall of the ventricles is called Purkinje fibers. And we can see this in this simple animation, how the impulse propagate from the SA node to the AV node, to the AV bundle, to the bundle branches, and then to the Purkinje fibers. We have many types of circulations in our body, like the coronary circulation, which is the circulation of the blood within the arteries supplying the heart itself. We have also the pulmonary circulation, which represent the flow of blood between the heart and the lungs for oxygenation of the non-oxygenated blood. And we have the systemic circulation, which is the flow of blood between the heart and every and each cell in our body to get its nutrition. We also have the portal circulation, which means the flow of blood between the digestive tract and the liver. If we compare the vessels that lie within the cardiovascular system, we first have the arteries. They are tubes that carry blood away from the heart. They distribute blood to the tissues by their branches. The arteries get smaller and smaller to form what are called arterioles. The union between these branches is called anastomosis. For the veins, they are tubes carrying the blood towards the heart. They have tributaries. They are formed by the capillaries which join together to form small venules. The small venules join other small venules to form the large venules. The large venules then join to form the big veins. Some veins contain valves to allow blood to pass to the heart against gravity. For the capillaries, they connect both the arteries and veins together. The capillary wall is very thin, so it allows the passage of materials like oxygen and carbon dioxide to and from the cells. The anastomosis means end-to-end -end communication between two neighboring vessels. In this example, we have end-to-end -end anastomosis between the radial and the ulnar arteries in the hand. Both arteries communicate with each other directly or sometimes like this anastomosis between the arteries supplying the heart or the coronary arteries, the communication or the anastomosis is through capillaries. We may also find another type of anastomosis between the arteries and veins. We call it arteriovenous anastomosis. What's meant by in the arteries? These are arteries with no anastomosis. They are found in arteries supplying the retina and the brain. The arteries here just end in capillaries and the other side of the capillaries will form the veins and that's it. And there is no anastomosis between these branches with each other. If sudden blockage of uh, these branches occur, death of the tissue its supplies will take place. For the wavy arteries, they have a wavy or tortuous course. They have the ability to stretch. That's why we can see them on moving or growing uh, organs like the facial artery, like the lingual artery, like the splenic artery here. 
or the uterine artery which supplies the uterus. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know if I upload another video.